Wonderful. It's another Monday, and we're back again on Today's Woman. This is the Church of Pentecost, COP USA Radio. And as usual, our discussion continues. Today, we are continuing with our juicy topic of last week. We're looking at rumors, perceptions, and assumptions. I have with me Deaconess Hannah Amwa. She works in hospice. She's an RN case manager. And she's with me, Deaconess Hannah Amwa. You are welcome to today's woman again. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Mama Georgina Buama is a former New York Regional Women's Ministry leader. She's a veteran in the women's ministry and she also works in health. She's a nurse. Mama Georgina is a mother of many. And once again, you're welcome to today's woman, Mama Georgina. Thank you, Mom. Wonderful. And if if you want to know today's woman, you know so Mommy Henrietta can see she's always, always with me. A product of the Pensa ministry. She's the first lady of Tennessee, married to Reverend Benjamin Kasi, a mother and a woman who loves the Lord. So Mommy Henrietta can see once again, you are welcome to today's woman. Thank you so much, Savannah, for having me again. Wonderful. And we have a VIP guest with us today, a veteran in the Lord, a seasoned woman of God. Mama Salome is here with us today because we are going on a higher dimension. Our mommy is here to provide us with a higher option on the topic of faith. We're adding faith to it. Our mommy is the first lady for the region of Atlanta. She's married to Evangelist Steven Omania, who a mother. It's a mother to all the people in Atlanta region. She's a mother of girls. So any news you know about girls, you better see our mother. Mama Salome Omania, well, it's a pleasure to have you once again. And professionally, our mother has worked as a teacher in the past. God bless you, Mama Salome, for being Thank with you. Us. Thank you for having me. God bless you, you too. Amen. Amen. So, you know, last week we were talking about assumptions, we we're talking about rumors, we we're talking about perceptions. And we have said that when you look at perception, it's an idea, a belief, or an image you have as a result of that. It's based on how you see things, how you understand things. And we said that when you come to assumptions, it's a belief or feeling that you have that something is true or something will happen, although you may not have a proof for it. But when it comes to rumors, it's a piece of information, a story that you talk about it may be true it may not be true yet we spend stories yes we weave stories and so today we are going to continue but our focus is on faith and so the first thing we want to look at is how is our perception linked to our faith we touched on it briefly last week and today we're going to go on so mama salome we're going to defer to you what should we hear and think about when we are looking at the perception of mankind and our faith Ah, we thank God for today. Uh, and we also, I'm grateful to be on the line with you. Yeah, when we talk of a perception of faith, or if we, another way, if you want to define faith, faith is belief and trust in a, lo in a loyalty to God. Mm. Or in other words, we can also define faith as being something that goes beyond. Mm. beyond our imagination it, it, it's an it, faith goes beyond mental assent mm. that is something that is so active and confident we have in God mm. that is how faith can be defined that it's, thank it's you it. very much mommy yeah. thank you very much You're for welcome. bringing us God God I mm. heard God God in every aspect mm. of what you were mm. saying and, you know, we as believers, we also, even in this year of glory, our mm. emphasis is on God. Thank you, Mommy, for opening up the discussion. So, Mommy mm. Henrietta, if you want to piggyback on what Mommy just said and give us a different dimension as well. Right. I mean, just to kind of um, continue where, um, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, stated, you know, when we talk about faith, the faith is um, a belief or a strong stand or firm stance on our uh, our understanding our biblical doctrine or traditions. Um, so as believers, when we see, when we talk about faith, it's our faith is what we see in God which is through his word. Um, what we learn, what we have studied through his word is what establishes our faith in him. Um, and so we, as we were talking about last time, we talked a little bit about perception being the idea or the belief 
or um, the image of what we have, what we um, we uh, believe in, based on what we have seen or mm. what we stand. So um, faith, uh, perception has a strong linkage to our as believers because what we see can taint our faith, can t- can can determine how we believe things or how we understand things. Mm. We are standing, especially when it comes to. Um, as believers, us standing and 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 how firm we are in Christ and our understanding of Him as our Savior and our believer. Thank you so much. The faith and our understanding, the faith and our standing, the faith and our belief. That richly bless you, Auntie Georgina and Auntie Hannah. Is there something else that you want to add? Oh, uh, I think uh, talking about faith. Faith is something that we believe and trust in. Even though we haven't seen the details of it, but we trust it and we put all our confidence in it. So Mm. faith is something that you adhere to, which uh, is something that you you are yet to know, but you believe in it. Mm. All right. Thank you so much. You believe in it, but it's not a reality. God bless you. Dickness Hannah. What I want to add to what has been said is uh, when you read Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says uh, faith comes from hearing uh, and hearing the word of God. Mm -hmm. Perception, uh, we defined it last week as an idea, a belief or an image you have as a result of how you see or understand stuff. So Mm -hmm. knowing that we as Christians and believers our faith is based on the word of God, our belief in the word of God. And so we can channel our perception using what we have been taught in the word of God or what we have uh, learned in the word of God to shape the way we think, the way we see things, the way we perceive things. Wonderful. I wanted to, you know, thank you all for looking at from the spiritual dimension. I wanted to read what the dictionary has to say about faith, even as we zoom into our scripture. So you go to the Webster dictionary and there are so many dictionary definitions out there, but it says it's a belief and trust in the loyalty of God. It's a a belief in a traditional doctrine. And I like what it says. It's a complete trust. It's a complete trust. And so we're going to go to our scripture. And um, you go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, you had said it. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen by it. The elders obtained a good testimony. And you took us back to the origin or the source of our faith being the word of God. And you go to also the Romans, the scripture in Romans, chapter 1, verse 17, and it says, for in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So, mommy, you know, when you look at the news and the, the, the things that are happening, there's a reality. So we establish that there's a rumor, there is a perception, there is a, an assumption out there. All these things are coming from a place and the Bible is leading us to faith. So you look to the news and we are all being told, you know, to go with universal precautions, wash your hands, wash your hands, use alcohol sanitizer because uh, COVID-19 is everywhere and people are panicking. And so mommy, looking at what is happening in the world and looking at what the Bible is telling us, how should we balance a reality of disease, a pandemic with the word of God? Mama Salome. Just as you said, we all we have all heard what is going on. Um, uh, for example, like Italy, they've declared the country as a, a state of emergency, whatever. So when you look, uh, you listen to news, you don't even see one person walking mm-hmm. around. And who, I mean, it, it's true. The coronavirus is something that is reality, it's real. But as Christians, we should have faith in God that's upon whatever is being said, whatever we've been hearing, God mm. will protect us. We have faith, we have a belief, we have a complete trust and confidence in the Lord that even though this virus is going around, it will never in any way affect us. God will not leave us the same. He will not just look at, upon us to be affected with this virus. And we as Christians, we should have every trust. We should have the faith, the belief in God that he who has called us is faithful. So he will never, never 
in any way leave us for this virus to, to, be, to be, for us to be affected with the virus. Yeah, we hear the rumors, things that we hear, it's frightening, to be honest with you. So what, right now, it's, it's a matter of precaution and faith, mm. and faith. Mm. And if we do that, that's all, God will take control of us. Yeah. Amen. God bless you, mommy. And you know, that's exactly what our scripture is saying, that faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. And so, Mommy, thank you for looking at it. The, the facts are there, but if we have a certain hope. So, Mommy Henrietta, if you wanted to add to that. It's just to add to what our mother was saying, you know, when we look at what is actually going on, we look at the news, there's so, there's so much going on. Um, there's so much questions. There's so much alarm. Um, you know, there's so many holes, and we're not able to really fully understand what's going on. How do we deal with this epidemic? It's, there's just so many questions. But as believers, we have to know that, as our mother stated, we serve a living God. Mm. Question is necessary for us to take. We have to apply wisdom in everything that we are doing. But after doing those things, after washing our hands, after being very cautious of, you know, when we're coughing, if we're not feeling well, and et cetera, we should know that we serve a living God. Mm -hmm. Some forget those things, you know, the mm -hmm. inner this things like this to bring fear in us as believers and we begin to question what God is able or capable of doing but as believers we have to know and understand there's no virus on this earth outside of this earth under this earth that is bigger or greater than our God and with that being said we have faith and knowing that what we see today we will we won't see it for much longer because yeah. God is something for his children so that's what we have to stand on yes we have to take our precautions we shouldn't go out in the world and say oh as for me i'm a believer so i'm going to be coughing anywhere and if anybody coughs on me i'm fine no mm. but we have to take our precautions we have to apply wisdom but we have to have faith in god don't allow any fear to overcome us and be and to the point where we lock ourselves in the corner somewhere no but we should have faith that god is able to do all things mm. amen amen amen, amen. Man. And you know, you, you, you said it that there's nothing beyond our God. We, you know, some, sometimes it looks like we are over spiritualizing it. So Mama Salome, I'm going to come back to you before, you know, Mama Hannah and Mama Georgina. So what about those who are saying, well, this is not a spiritual matter. This is a physical vi virus that is causing this. We are hand washing and all that. So why are you guys talking about faith here? Mommy, look into that for us because we said faith is the evidence of things so forth. So what what words do you have for people who think, look, these people are over spiritualizing this. This has got nothing to do with spirituality, mommy. Yeah, um, we are Christians. We, 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 I mean, God has called us. And mm -hmm. this thing that is going around, this is not the first time that an epidemic has coming around. Even in the Bible, it happened. In Leviticus, there were some diseases that came up. up and, 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 and when you read Levit Leviticus, we, they were quarantined. Those who were affected were, mm. were, were being sent out from the town to a, a secular place. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, what I'm saying is we have Christians in the world. We have unbelievers too in the world. And we as Christians, if we are to number, we outnumber unbelievers. So mm. we as Christians, even though it's the disease, we shouldn't classify it as so spiritual. But what I'm saying is there's nothing that happens that God doesn't know of. He mm -hmm. knew, God knew for new that this year, the third month of this year, March, something like this will come up. Mm -hmm. And God has already planned, I mean, to protect us already. Amen. So we should, even though, we, we, if we look at, we come to the secular world, we should know that the disease is around going on. Right. But when we come to the Bible, we should have the faith. That God will not, in the Bible, say He will not inflict the disease He inflicted in the, on the Egyptians, on to eat the Israelites, we Man. the Christians. So no matter what, the disease that is going around will never in any way inflict us. God will protect us. So if in the secular world they are saying it's real, the virus is real, it can kill you. Even takes two weeks for you to be de to detect whether you have it. So I mean, it, it's something that is serious, but we should bring into the biblical aspect and with our faith and believe that God is in control. Mm -hmm. God, is in, there is nothing that happens that God is not aware. He is mm -hmm. aware and he will take care of us. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen, mommy. God bless you for saying God is in control. And, you know, thank you so much. Auntie Georgina and Deaconess Hannah. Uh, when we look in the scriptures at uh, Psalm 121, mm -hmm. it says, when we lift up our eyes into the skies, where does our help come from? And when you read the uh, verse 3, it says, the, we will not the Lord will not let our foot slip on anything. Mm -hmm. So he listening to things that are going on in the, uh, on the television and things that are circulating in the world, they are very scary. But since we are believers and we believe in the word of God, we mm -hmm. based our hope and faith on this words that the Bible has said. Even That's though right. things are happening, but mm. when we follow the uh, precautions that has been given out and also uh, put our faith in the Lord, we are not going to be harmed because the Lord himself has told us that he is with us and he will guide us through. So no matter what we are going through, the Lord is in control. So as believers, we shouldn't panic so much as if we don't have anybody. If mm -hmm. you have somebody that you fall on, you have you, you you speak with boldness. So we have a God who we serve. So this God has promised us that we should believe and trust in Him. So trusting in Him will see us through, and we know that by doing whatever precautions that has been given out, we will all be saved, as the Bible always tells us not to be afraid. Amen. Amen. God yes. bless you so much. Auntie Hannah. Um, the little that I want to add to what has been said already is I want everybody out there to know that we Christians, believers, we are not ignorant of what is going on. We are for sure aware of it and we know the consequences. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, our hope and our trust is in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And as we are sharing our ideas on this platform, you know, we have so many Christians, we have so many believers, but who has faith in the Lord among the believers, among the community of Christians, it will take the one whose faith is in the Lord to save them in times like this for them mm -hmm. to get there, unless God decides to favor you. And so if you're a Christian and you are out there, I just want you to kind of start shaping your belief and your trust. Are you going to believe in the hand sanitizers or the hand washing? People are doing it, but they're still getting it. Mm. But who are you going to trust in? And we are not saying like our mama um, or money, Yeboa said, we are not going to say, don't take those precautions. We are, but our faith, is in mm -hmm. the Lord. We trust in him. Mm -hmm. If he mm -hmm. was able to save the Israelites from that death plague in the time of uh, uh, doing their stay in Egypt because of the Passover love, then we trust in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that because of our faith in him, he's going to see us. Through. So if you want to have faith, I know God will grant you that grace. Some of us, the favor of God will take us far. Mm -hmm. But I want to say out there that our faith is going to take us far. And it's an individual affair here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. We trust in our God. And I think that the greater emphasis that we are all, you know, making here is we are going with what the CDC is saying. You know, as a church, our national Head, our leadership from the international has brought us a communication of you know what we, we ought to do, how to sanitize, how to even follow you know directives that have come from the state and from the federal government. So we are being factual here, and we said, you know, don't perpetuate something that is not factual. We are going with the facts. We do believe in washing your hands, we do believe in using hand sanitizers, we do believe in if you are not feeling well, do not go in, into you know the public. We are going by what the, the word of 
God even said we should love our neighbors as ourselves. So all these things we are going with, and we are saying, look, in spite of it all, there is also a spiritual part of us, which is fear is not palpable. Fear is not tangible, but it's equally real. And a person that is living in fear panics, and the behavior is different. And we are saying there is a perception that shapes how you behave, and there's the faith that comes in to help. So it's very great that we've started like that. Let me, Mama Salome, I'm going to read this scripture and have you come in even as everybody else comes. So even as we're talking about faith and, you know, the fact that, well, what does this got to do with spirituality? And we are saying, yes, by all means it does. It reminded me of something that happened in Numbers. And I want to go to that. We'll look at that and then, you know, continue. So I'm going to the book of Numbers, chapter 13. So that even as we see that, we'll, 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 Mama Salome will start the discussion for us and, you know, we'll progress further. So I'm looking at it from the New King James Version of the Bible. And the Bible says, I'm looking at verse 27. It says, then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. I'm going to take that again. Mm -hmm. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit. Mommy, I'm going to jump to verse 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are all well able to overcome it. 31. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we verse 32 and they gave the children of israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out saying the land through which we have gone as spies is the land that devours its inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in it are men and a man of great stature, verse 33, and then mommy, you can come in. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anna came from the giants, and we are like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. So, mommy, look at where we are coming from assumption, perception, mm -hmm. rumors, all of it. I, we see it here. Perception is an idea, a belief, or an image you have as a result of how you see or understand something. An assumption is a belief or feeling that a story or something that you've seen is true or something is about to happen. And then a rumor is a piece of information or a story you spin, whether it's true or not. Mama Salome, what do you see in this scripture? <laughs> yeah, what I see is um, when the, the, the spice went, as we just read when they came they told whatever they saw over there the 27 said we went to the land where you sent us and truly flows with milk and honey mm. and this is the fruit they even brought an evidence that mm. the land is truly rich flowing with milk and honey and even this is an evidence then uh uh, uh upon all that i think they, 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 their faith were still shivering Nevertheless, because of the people they saw on the land, nevertheless, the people we, who dwell in the land are strong. So the people there, they, they were strong people. So one, they saw the people, even though the land was flowing with milk and honey, because of the people they saw who to them, they felt they were so strong than them. Mm. And the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of um, Anak there. So the, the land was good, everything was fine. But because of these enemies and the strong people that were there, their faith began to shiver. Hmm. Okay, so when we come to 30, then Caleb quieted the people, Moses, before Moses, and said, let us go up at once. So among the people who went, Caleb was the only person who was able to come out bold. So to me, Caleb had that faith, that trust in the Lord, that even though the land is flowing with milk and honey, and also we have people there that when we, we go before them, we are like, uh, uh, I mean, ants before them. Mm -hmm. So we can't overtake that land. Mm. 
But Caleb saw that even upon that, God will take control. God yeah. will see them through. So Caleb had that faith and told Moses, Moses, look, it is true. Whatever my other brothers are saying, but I want to assure and I want to make it clear to them that upon all that, we will be able to possess the land. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is upon all Kenora, I don't even know how to mention Kenora, mm -hmm. or whatever, we will, we, we, we will, be, we will stand. Mm -hmm. Nothing will happen. It will be not an iota or not even a, a, a hair will come out from our hair upon mm -hmm. this crisis that is going on. Nothing whatsoever will happen to us. So Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. But, but the other men started spreading the rumor. Mm. They started saying things, even when maybe when they, when they saw things, maybe it was A, but they added more to it mm. to frightening the people. So right now I'm not saying the coronavirus, the, 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 I mean, uh, nurses, <laughs> I mean, you know COVID more. COVID-19, right? COVID-19, yeah. COVID-19, whatever. Huh? It's true. It's so serious. It's going on. But sometimes when you listen to the news, today I was listening to uh, Peace FM Ghana and uh, WHO, World Health Organization, have brought something that we should limit the way we listen to the, the news about coronavirus too much on the on the, on the, um, uh, on TV and social media because some people exaggerate it too much. They mm. bring it up so much to, to, to frightening people to bring their faith down. So that is what the people do, did. Apart from Caleb, the rest started spreading the rumor, saying it in a frightening way. Even though the people were there, they were stronger than us. But I think they exaggerated it so much. So it brought fear onto the people. And they started crying, weeping, crying on, on Moses. That why did you even bring us from the, the land of Egypt to come and kill us here, or for us to die? So right now, the, the thing that is going on, it's true, but the perception, the assumption, and the rumor, especially the rumor, we should look at it very well, and we shouldn't put all our trust in it. That that is how the virus is. So whatever they are saying is what is it is. It is true, but we should rely on God and know that the land is flowing, I mean, milk and honey. The land is good. God will take care of us. He said we are his glorious church and we are glorious. As time goes on, I, I, I was searching the Bible and I came across Chronicles 7, Second Chronicles 7, later on I'll bring it. So God will protect us. It is true, things are going on, but then we shouldn't depend so much on the rumor and the things that are, they, they are saying about it. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, mommy. I'm going to pause a moment and just acknowledge our people and then I will take, you know, further contributions from our guests who are on here. But mommy has really gone in depth with us. And it's very, very relevant to us in our time because that's what's going on. But I, let's acknowledge our people. This is the Church of Pentecost COP USA Radio. And this is today's woman. We like you all and we are thankful to God for you. We love you for always being with us to support us. So we have Deaconess Maud Mansovon. So she's with us. God bless you. Mama Louisa Jackson Henry. She's always with us. She says, good afternoon, everyone. More blessings to you all. Amen. And more blessings to you, Auntie Angela. Angelina Simple is on there. God bless you. Deaconess Nano, she is with us. God bless you. Elder Sam, I thank you at the studio. God richly bless you for all you do and for always, you know, connecting us. And my brother-in-law, all the way from Ghana, is with us. Enoch, I appear to Ampofo Elder. God bless you. Auntie Monica Owusu is with us. She said, God bless you, woman of God. Amen. And God bless you too. And Mama Mary Ali, Apostle, uh, Dr. Benjamin Ali's wife is with us. God bless you. Reverend Kosi is with us. God bless you, man of God, for giving us of Mommy Henrietta. Elder Kobe Jeffrey is with us. God bless you, sir. You know, Aunt Louise Henry Jackson says, 
faith is believing in God. This is what the Lord Lama was saying. Reverend Isaac Aban is with us. God bless you, man of God. We have uh, our mother, Alma Foster. She said, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to you, too. Uh, Benny's, uh, Mrs. Benny's Boating is with us. God bless you. Auntie Alma Foster says, pray and work on it. Amen. We'll do that. Mama Maggie Eisen of New York is with us. God bless you, ma'am. Richard Amachi is an elder in Ghana. He's with us. God bless you, Steph. And Auntie Alma Foster says, it's a sign to know that in everything, we should be standing firm on the solid rock. That's who we are standing on, Jesus Christ, our rock. Deacon Albert Dakun is with us. God bless you. Auntie Grace Ado is with us. God bless you, ma'am. One of my big sisters, Mrs. Benedicta Brookman and Jay is with us. God bless you and greetings to grandma and everybody. And she said, praise God, family. Praise God to you too. Elder Christian Nuo is with us. God bless you, Elder. Atta Kakra God bless you, sir. One of my namesakes, Gifty Upon from Durham is with us. God bless you. And she says, the Lord loves the just and he will not forsake his faithful ones. Absolutely. Auntie Mariama K is with us. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Mr. Osebos is with us. Elder Kwame Ketia is with us. God bless you, sir. Reverend yeah, and the first lady, Yan Shura Nancy, is with us. God bless you, woman of God. Reverend Samuel Kumson is with us. God bless you. Greetings to first lady and the family. And Mrs. Apia, my daughter, is with us. God bless you. And Auntie Alma says that we have faith. We can tell the mountain to go and jump over the sea. Uh, we have other people, too, who are in, in tune with us. Um, Auntie Georgina Apia, God bless you for being with us. Also... First Lady Cynthia Dumpodofi is with us. God bless you. Uh, one of my former co-workers, um, Renee, she's with us. God bless you. And we have um, so many other people that, you know, as we keep going along, we will keep on, you know, acknowledging all of them. God bless you all. And your contributions on the topic are absolutely welcome. Back to you again. So Mommy Henrietta could see. Our mommy was talking to us about the exaggeration of the facts. And you know, something that dawned on my heart in that scripture is this. When you go to the verse 27, the people said, in, we're back to Numbers chapter 13. And they said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And if you cross-reference that with the book of Exodus chapter 3, 7 to 8, the Bible said, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry because of their mm. taskmasters, for I know their sorrow, verse 8. So mm. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up to that land, to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. So this is the promise, and this is what they are testifying fine they said the land truly flows with milk and honey and this is the evidence of the fruit but look at the same people saying in verse you know when they, mm. the same people said that verse 32 they said the land devours its inhabitants like this is the evidence now it devours its inhabitants somehow we hurry it you know uh, as of what I said so much um, um, as far as the scripture but it's so when you read the scripture, it's so present in today's world because you see that um, in scripture, they saw it. They were able to show the evidence of it, but they considered themselves so small uh, compared to what was before them. If you look at even what we're facing today with this epidemic, you know, the doctors have no idea how to heal the sickness. Um, they have no idea how to prevent it from happening. Those who have it, it's it's by grace that they're able to even get through it. So it's a big gap, a big question mark that's going on. But in these situations, in this time, you see that there was a Caleb that stood up and said, irrespective of these giants we see before us, we are able to go and possess the land. And so, so sometimes even when I say, when I hear people say, this isn't spiritual, like you said earlier, but um, this is, we, it's, it's, it's physical. If the doctors themselves don't even know how to heal this disease, mm -hmm. they're not able to give us a real definition of where this came from and how we can prevent it. Then I ask myself, then if it's not spiritual, then what is it? It, it, uh, it has to be spiritual. So mm -hmm. it, it implores us as believers to come and stand firm on the word of God, stand firm on what God has promised and what God has declared. Caleb was able to do that. And so he said that this is something that God has promised to us. 
He's not going to bring us this, to this point for us to see it, for us to be able to testify to it and tell us we can't get there. So the one who was able to carry us this far will take us to the end. And that is something that as believers, we also have to believe that God is not going to bring us to this land for some um, epidemic to come and take hold of us. No, we have to trust in God and trust in his word and stand firm and be a Caleb of this time and cry unto him. And as we do so, God was himself will show himself mighty. So it's important for us to, as believers to be strong in our faith in this time. Don't allow what we are seeing and the things that we are hearing, because I'm telling you, we are hearing a lot. This morning mm -hmm. I heard just go and boil some garlic and some hot water, all of this will be, you'll be cured of the epidemic. We hear so many things, but us as believers, we, we know that it's only God, it's only God himself that can take this epidemic off of this land. And so it is important for us to cry out unto him and not to be filled with so much fear and anxiety, but be motivated and be have even more confidence in what God is able to do in this land. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. All right, Mama Georgina and Auntie Hannah, is there something you want to add? Thank you both. Uh, as our mothers just said, uh, looking at it, anything that is beyond our imagination is only the Lord who has a solution to it. So mm -hmm. when people say it's not, uh, it's not spiritual, we don't, even the doctors themselves don't even know what this thing is coming with. Mm. So if this thing, if the doctors don't have any idea, then the only person who knows everything from the beginning to the end is God. So mm. in a way, it's a, it's a spiritual fight because the Lord of hosts knows what to do to get rid of this disease. And as Cal, uh, Caleb said, uh, even though they were big and strong, but they can overtake them. Yes, indeed, the disease is scary, but we know that our God is able to fight everything. So we are not looking down on our, I mean, our spiritual aspect of this disease. We all know that it's it's physical by seeing it, but in spiritual aspect, it's the Lord alone who can do this battle for us. Very, very true. Uh, you know, as you said it, Bible says that if anybody lacks wisdom, let them ask of the, of the Lord and he gives mm. freely. And we know that we, we need wisdom. We need understanding. We need knowledge. And our scientists are at their wit's end because it, some are responding, some are not responding. And so we, as people of faith, do believe that as we are fighting and physically it's not working, we are praying to God for wisdom. God show us the panacea. And there's nothing wrong with that because we are flesh we are spirit we are body and so for us we will take the faith and you know auntie hannah you know go ahead and come in as we even look at other scriptures to you know kind of help us understand faith and our perception what i want to add to what has already been said is um, i just want to compare the scripture with faith and perception mm. so when these spies went they actually so what physically everybody sees, mm. but Caleb decided to let the spirit of God change his perception about what everybody is seeing. Mm. So as children of God, uh, with our faith, uh, changing our perception, that's a typical example. Everybody might see blue, but you have to kind of dive in the spirit for the spirit of God to help you to change what, what is being seen or what, everybody noticed um, with the situation. If not, we will, we will all be carnal people. When you read, um, I have a, a scripture here I wanted to kind of share. Uh, when you read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 18, it says, so we fix our eyes on what is not seen, mm. but on what is unseen. So we mm. fix our eyes on what is, so, we as children of God, when it comes to faith and perception, using the word of God and the spirit of God that is in us, we have to focus on what is the invisible, you know, and that's what our mama Henrietta and our Dickness also said. It, it, what is not being seen, that is mm -hmm. what we have to focus on because if we focus on what is being seen, 
then we will just be acting like everybody, the norm, the, the mm. what is flowing. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. Now, Mommy, you, Mama Salome, thank you very much, Auntie Hannah. Mama Salome, you had mentioned, and I wanted to go back to it, that the rumors, the perception, we, we talked about it having an effect. And the whole nation in, in Numbers chapter 14, and I want us to look at that. As Mommy, you said today, you the well health of an organization, and you were being told that it's good to you know sift whatever you hear from the news because it's producing a certain effect. Now, in the verse fourteen, the Bible said that all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. So this is in continuation of Numbers chapter thirteen, when the people informed them that look, the sons of Anna uh, like giants. And we look like grasshoppers. And I, I, I'm, I get amazed, like, of all the things to compare yourself to a grasshopper. It's so easy to be crushed if that's how you see yourself. But perceptions have an effect on how we behave. And once that message was given out, then the whole congregation. So I want us to look at the impact. Okay, all of them are crying. I'm not hearing anywhere where they were praying. And it mm. says that, and all the children of Israel complained against Moses, Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died. And mind you, when we read in Exodus chapter 3, they were not crying to die. Mm. So, Mama Salome, please come in for us. Um, yeah, I, in Exodus, he said they were not crying to die. <laughs> but they were crying for a deliverer or someone to deliver them. <laughs> but right now, because they, 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 they heard the rumors and they heard all these things, they, 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 I mean, they, they were blaming Moses. Mm. So right now, uh, because of the virus and the rumors, the perceptions that we have and the things that are going on, what we hear, if you are not careful, we might deny our faith. We, 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 we might we say things that would be abominable to God or mm. to, to be against God. So we should, we, should, we should hold on to our faith and hold on to God, knowing very well that whatever virus is going on, we are exempted from it. We will not be inflicted with that disease because it is he who called us. Uh -huh. So they were crying for a deliverer, but because of what they had, the rumors they had, they now they were they were now crying. They, they, that, so it's like they were now even crying that why did they why did even the, the God sent in a deliverer, Moses to come and deliver them? Upon all what the Lord did for them, upon all their struggle, the Lord was with them. And now that God brought the, uh, deliverance to them, look at what they were saying. So we need to be very careful in this time. This is the period that God is testing our faith. God is looking up to us. God is looking up to us, whether we will deny him or we will, we will still cling up to him. Hallelujah. Ma'am, God bless you. God bless you. I want to acknowledge some people from my area that are still prepared to come in. So, Apostle John Ofori is with us. God bless you, Apostle. He's our national secretary for the, you know, national executive, and he is also the regional head for Ohio region. God bless you, Apostle, for taking the time to be with us. My husband is always with me, and he says, thank you, wonderful women of God. I feel your passion about this COVID-19 pandemic. Faith in God is indeed an answer for this season. Otherwise, the scary information all around us will even cripple many before even the disease does, which is very true. There's so much fear in, in people's hearts, and we are praying that even as we are talking about faith, God will intervene and grant people strength. And one of our daddies, Frank Thompson, is with us. God bless you, sir. I'm a first assessor for assurance came as a student dry line looking at the Jordan. So for us, assurance comes as we stand on the finished work of Christ and look back at the cross. Absolutely. This is the channel of Winnipeg, COP USA Radio, and this is today's woman. Thank you for being with us. Your questions and your contributions are welcome. And if you like us, share. God bless you. Back to you, Sir Mommy Henrietta Christine. You know, yes, just reading the scripture and going through it. It just, you know, sometimes when you look at the people of Israel and you see, you know, you saw how God had taken them out of so many situations. This isn't the first. 
He took him out of so many situations, but every time it got to the tough part, it's like they gave up, they became defeated. And as believers, we have to learn something from this, that God is a faithful God. And you see here in this scripture, they begin to cry out as if they had already been, they've already been, been uh, killed or died, you know, so we just have to use this time. Like our mother said, we have to even be more stronger in the Lord, be more on his word, be more stronger in prayer because the enemy will use this situation to cause us to question God and what he is able to do. Mm -hmm. Even telling someone, even in this time to pray as a believer, they get upset because they feel like, Oh, why is it always prayer? Why is it always prayer? What are we doing? But it's not about what we are doing. God is able to do it for us. God is, our, he is the creator of all things. This, mm -hmm. Even on this earth, he is the, he gave us authority as men to even give this virus a name, give it an identity. So this same God who was able to give us that authority to give this virus uh, an identity, the same God who is going to give us the authority to take this virus off of this land. So we have to have our trust and our faith in God. We shouldn't be discouraged by the things that we are hearing because to be honest, when you listen to the, the news alone, every time you go and you turn on the news, you're, you're, list, you're waiting for them to say something, um, some progress or something, and it's the same thing. But all they're saying is the, the increase has gone up. The death mm. toll has gone up. Everything is going up. So if you look at the things around us, it doesn't show to be going in a positive direction. But we as believers, we trust in our living God. And we mm. know, know and we trust that he is going to do something and he's going to show himself mighty. So as believers, let us stand firm on his word. All we have is the word of God. All we can hold on to is our faith. And let us trust in God to do what he has said he will do. Amen, amen. What we have is God. And, you know, we keep emphasizing so that there is this clarity here. We are doing what we are being told to do. We, we are trusting in the knowledge of the aspects that they have so far. And we are doing everything, every precautionary measure we are taking it. But what we are saying, and so beyond that, what next? Because the precautions are working, are they? The, you, As you said, the, this consistent increment in people that are being affected and people that are in, in the forefront are constantly in fear. Because, you know, somehow I was talking to uh, one, one person who was a nurse and she said, you know what, we go to work like you take care of a person today tomorrow your name is on a list that you need to be tested because when they came there was no sign whatsoever that they were positive and now they are positive are we are saying beyond the science we are praying to god and it's very good that we are looking at the scripture deaconess hannah um what i want to add on to that is you know when the rumors went around they got scared Mm. Their faith began to shake. So I want to shift a little bit to um, those of us who are spreading out uh, COVID-19. Are you sure of what you are spreading around or are you there to instigate uh, a fear? Or are you trying to encourage people that even though this is horrible, but we have faith, we trust in God to do it. Mm. Two messages came out when the spies came back. People that saw the giant, <clears throat> excuse me, the giant and uh, the fact that they could not conquer them. And Caleb also came with a fact. Unfortunately, Caleb's facts didn't spread as much as uh, the other spies. And that's where the fear came in. I believe if Caleb's um, fact had spread, they would be rushing to God and trusting in God with all their heart and not even going to Moses to, I mean, probably, I guess some of them, if they had the power, they would have uh, start beating him up here and there, you know? And so I want to throw it out to everybody that is spreading that uh, COVID-19 uh, rumors around. What are you, what is the end there of your messages around? You know, when you go to WhatsApp, uh, you hear people spreading the, uh, the fact of um, COVID-19, but then they add on top that the blood of Jesus has the power to do this. But others too, they are instigating fear. And what I also want to say is that the Bible said we should fear not. No matter what is going around, we, we, we as believers, our father, 
is telling us, don't fear, don't fear. Every single day as you wake up, as you listen to the news and you hear all these things, just keep in mind that your father is right by you and he's telling you, do not fear because I got your back and I'm going to see you through this. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. And you know, there's something great in what you said. You know, there's this say bad news travels fast. Mm -hmm. So people normally don't like, they like the juicy, however untrue it is. And so the good news of people are recovering. We are not hearing any of such news. The fact that some people were treated and they're healthy and back in the community, we are not hearing so much of that. But what we are hearing of those people that <laughs> and they've tested positive again, it's the news that keeps spreading. But like you said, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. There is a news that brings panic and fear, and there's a news that brings encouragement. Today, that's what we are doing. We are saying, go back to the word of God. And this is no news because in the Bible, several pandemics and plagues have happened. And what was the victory? That's what we are doing. The glorious woman her assumptions, her perceptions, and her faith, and we choose faith because through faith, we have a certain currency. I like it. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. And so I have something I'm hoping for, and I'm using faith as the money to buy it. Who buy but with the faith? This is, this is very great. Deaconess Georgina Buama, if you wanted to add to it, as we go to our next scripture in the book of Joshua to also do another comparison here as well. Uh, the little I would like to add to how our mothers have said is, uh, is that... Uh, the devil always uses fear to destroy our thoughts. And anytime that he gets any little opportunity, he uses it against us. So when we look in the Bible in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we saw that uh, the devil was trying to defeat Jehoshaphat with fear, spread rumors about all the people surrounding him. But uh, the Lord true prophecy told him, look, the battle is not yours, it's of the Lord. So with all these rumors and uh, assumptions and other things that we are hearing, we know that the battle is of the Lord, it's not ours. So we shouldn't panic so much about what we hear in the, in the air and the social media. They are trying to intimidate us. And as Christians, this is the time that we have to uh, exhibit our Christian faith. We have to stand on our grounds and believe in our God that he is able to do everything. Even the doctors themselves who are taking care of this illness, they are dying. So that means there is no hope in human being. The hope is in our God. So we should depend on the Lord we shouldn't be thinking that is we are more spiritual. If without God, everything cannot be done. So we should know that the Lord of hosts is in control of everything that is going on and he will see us through. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to acknowledge some people that are with us and we'll continue. So we have Reverend Godfrey Amudu. He is the Nam. He's with us. God bless you, man of God. Deaconess Fidelia and Nina J is with us. God bless you. And my brother, Dr. Ben, Benny Mensa is with us. God bless you. Greetings to the family. And Alma Foster says the best. Well, today we are very privileged because the national head himself, Apostle Ajimana Mwako, is with us. Apostle Michael Ajimana Mwako, thank you so much, Apostle, for being with us. And, you know, as always, um, your contributions are welcome. And, you know, we can imagine that for a leader of a church of this nature, it's not an easy time that we are in. But thank you for your words of encouragement that you've said to the entire church, leaning us towards prayer and also asking us to go with what the CDC and the federal is teaching us. That's what we do. So Apostle Ajimana Marco, God bless you for taking time to be with us. Greetings to Mama Sheila and the family. And you know, we are back again, you know, for those who might just have joined us. We last week, we looked at our perceptions, things that influence how we see things, how we interpret things. And today we are saying, 
faith is the evidence of things hoped for, is the substance of things hoped for, is the evidence of things yet not seen. And so it's just like you seeing something on the screen or there's a commercial, you saw that nice, you know, for ladies, nice purse, that nice wild hat that you liked and you have money in the bank so you're not afraid, you sit behind your computer and you just check it out and pay for it. And we are saying faith is like that. In this season, what we are looking for is healing and we are buying it with our faith because our medical personnel are doing their very best, but it's not working out yet. They are doctors who are doing the very best they can, but they themselves have been struck ill with this virus. And we, the believers, are saying we have a currency. We have money. That money is faith. And you know, the Bible says that, is there no balm in Gilead? The physicians, so everything is in the Bible. You go to the book of Jeremiah. I'm getting very passionate here. I need to slow myself down. But <laughs> the book of Jeremiah and just read the scripture and come back because you know sometimes we make things like why are we spiritualizing this we are mm -hmm. spiritualizing this because we are in the flesh and we are also in the spirit we mm. do what the flesh is asking of us we are washing our hands we are socially distancing ourselves but we have money which is the word of God it's our faith now you go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 8 I'm looking at 22 and the Bible says is there no bomb in Gilead is there no physician there? Why then is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? And so in, in the days of Moses, it happened, Mara, there was a bitter water. Nobody could make the water such that you could drink it. But when they prayed, God would show a lot, an ordinary word, and that was put in the water. And Bible said that water that was bitter, it turned to become sweet and people could drink it. So in this season where the news is discouraging, you know, I tried to go to the shop and the kind of dressings that people brought, I was like, this is even more scary than what I've seen in the news, because some modifications that people have made, some kind of gloves that I've never seen before, some kind of things that people masks that people are putting when I was like, I better hurry up and come home because that in itself is a nightmare for me, even than what the news is saying. I don't know the experiences that you've all had, but what we want people's heart to know is we know the reality. We are not undermining what's happening, but we are saying the news is making you afraid, but we are coming with the word of God. Put your hope in God. He's able to save. So, Mama Salome, when you go to the book of Joshua 2, 8 to 13, this is a very profound story of the deliverance that God gave to Rahab and her family. But today, the focus is not on that deliverance, but on something that she said, which is very profound to me, even in this discussion. She says something in verse 9, perception, assumption in our faith. She said, I know the Lord has given you this land. So the Israelites have not possessed the land already, but she's making a proclamation. She says, I know, very definitive with a certitude. I know the Lord has given you this land. She told them, we are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in terror. This is from the New Living Translation. And she said, for we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know what you did to Sion and Og and the two Amorite kings. I'm going to jump in 11 and say, she said, no wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. She said, for the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above the earth below. Verse 12. Then she says, swear to me. So, Mama, I want us to look at the power of words, the perceptions that we have. The we already assumed something here. And she made a declaration, I know God is going to give you. So, based on that, she took a certain position, even as you address us who are living in fear. Mama Salome. Yeah. Um, here we see Rahab, who was a harlot. So uh, uh, you, you come into your mind that she wasn't somebody who, who, who knew God or who knew Christ. But uh, what she has heard or she, 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 she has heard about these spies that they belong to God. They are God people. So he instantly had faith in them and in God also. And uh, 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 
uh, what I'm trying to say is because of he knows he, he heard what God has done for the people of Israel. So immediately when he, he made up her mind to rescue or to, to hide these people, knowing very well that even her life will be at stake if they get to know that he is hiding these spies. But because of the faith he had in God, he was able to hide these people and he relied on them, knowing that because they have all the power God has given to them, and as they come, they will have, I mean, they, they will be victorious. They will be able to conquer the enemy over there. So Rahab had that courage and all that faith. And he said, we have heard how God delivered you, Israelites, from the hands of the Egyptians, how he walked you guys through the Red Sea. And because of all this that we have, I, I have heard, I know that you will, I mean, you, you, God has already given you the land or you have already won the victory. So right now, what I want to say is because of the God we have and because of the faith we have in God and because we know that he has done some for us already, he has won the victory for us. He went on the cross for us. So whatever is going on now, the disease that is going on now, we should have faith in God that because he has already won the victory for us, we know that we will go through this time successfully. We will go through it that nothing whatsoever will happen to any of our members because we have faith in him. We know him that he is a God who is all-knowing God. He is a God who is a working miracle God. He is a God who is able to raise even the dead to come into life. So we have that, have that faith. So we being Christians, we should have that same faith and encourage ourselves that the God who did it in the olden days is able to do it now also for us. He will deliver us. Hallelujah. He will deliver mm -hmm. us. So he said, the verse 12, he said, when you, he, he begged the, the spies that when they, they, they come, they should save her and her, I mean, her family also. So right now our prayer is, Lord, on behalf of our family, we are pleading with you to intercede for us, to save us from this epidemic and from this virus that is going around. And we know that God is a faithful God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. 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 Mommy, God bless you. You know, you've made a very profound point is for us to focus on the power of God. This is a, a woman who, who was never a believer, but by hearing what God did, faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God, by hearing the powerful acts of God in the life of the Israelites, she put her faith in God. And I like what a New Living Translation said of Joshua 2 verse 12. She said, and when Jericho is conquered, there's no assumption if you can, it's going to happen. But when you guys do this, you will let me live along with my father and mother. And she placed her trust in mere human beings that once they give her their word, that they are going to be faithful. And we mm. are Mommy, you are focusing us on God, and we also are able to place our trust. And so, Mommy Harriet, you said something profound before that God has done things in the past. This is not new. You know, we have you know testaments or testimonies of things that have happened in the past, and people that have been shot with guns and they've still lived. People that you know, have, people thought they died and they still live. Babies that mothers have tried to bury them that they still live. We have all these testimonies, but beyond that are also testimonies in our personal lives of what God is able to do. So this time is not going to challenge us beyond measure for us to begin to think that COVID-19 is more powerful than our God. We refuse to say that, and even as a church. Every year, even recently, we went to a council meeting, and you look at the spectacular events that God is doing, even just in the Church of Pentecost, not to talk about the Christian dom, then God is all powerful. Yes, we are facing the physical challenge, but it's not going to change us from saying that our God is not able to do it. Deaconess Hannah and, you know, so Mommy Henrietta, Mama Georgina, whoever wants to go first. Yes, so Mommy, like you were saying, it's very true. You know, as believers, we have to <laughs> of course, like you said, we, we, we are listening to the instructions of our leadership um, as far as precautions that we should take, and we are adhering to those precautions. But we should also not sit back and be so concerned and be so fearful and be so afraid. But we should look 
not only in the word of God, at the many things that God was able to do, but like you're saying, in our personal lives, in our church, at so many testimonies of God's glory, of God taking us out of certain situations, taking us out of captivities and et cetera. We look at those things and we are standing firm. It allows us to be strong and not to be filled with so much fear because at now it's like so many believers are filled with so much anxiety, you know, so much paranoia. You don't even want to leave your house. You're leaving your house like you're saying, fully dressed in and you don't even know what they're wearing, just all kinds of things. I was watching a woman, she had so many trash bags all over her just to go stand in her front lawn because of everything that is going on. So, you know, we are so much filled with all of this anxiety, but we as believers, we serve a living God. And I'm so happy that in our church, we've declared this week a time of prayer and fasting. If we don't have anything to do, we have, a, we have every cause to cry out unto the Lord because it is only God who can take us out of this situation. It is only God that can endow in the doctors the wisdom they need to be able to even come up with the vaccine or come up with the antidote. So it is important for us as believers to stand now, if not now, this is the most important time than any other time before, to stand and to cry out unto the Lord. And when we're doing that and when we're crying out unto the Lord, we're referencing the many things that he's been able to do in the past. So this is very small on the sight of God. We have to understand as believers, this is very, very, very small because God has, was able to do greater things. So we just cry out to him and we have that confidence, that faith, that God is going to do it again for us once more. God bless you. I am the resurrection and the life. And no, so like you said, we, we really need to go back to what is our foundation? What is our foundation? Are we serving God only when things are good? When the bad comes, what are we saying? And, you know, we are going to spiritualize it because our God has proven from time to time that he's faithful. That's very great. You can just add it. Um, what I want to add to what has been said is um, looking at um, Rahab, mm. like our Mama Salome said earlier on, she was an unbeliever, but yet because of what she has had, she decided to trust in the God of the Israelites and also uh, the army of Israelites, knowing the power that God has placed in them. So when, I, when uh, um, our mom was reading through that verse, I was just thinking about it. How come the, even the spies that went lost their faith, but an unbeliever, based on what she had, rumors that she had, it changed her perception about the whole situation. Um, what I want to take out and share with everybody out there is, that means in uh, things that we spread out, there can be some that will be positive and have positive effect. And so in this time and in our life, whatever we are sharing out there, I will plead that we will have a positive mindset wanting to affect somebody positively. It was a rumor, but it wasn't a bad rumor. It was a rumor that changed that woman's perception about the God of Israel. And secondly, even an unbeliever knew that there is a God or there is, there is a power behind the Israelites. Mm. And for sure, even though they might be bigger and giant in this land, she knew and believed in the God of Israel. And as you, if you continue the story, her and her family got saved. And so believers out there, unbelievers out there, we want to proclaim to you that we have a God who is able. He is able to do exceedingly and above what you can even assume and think of in this time. Like it has been said earlier on, if human beings cannot answer us, where do we run to? Are we going to stay in our fear? Are we going to stay in our anxiety? Are we going to let this depress us and shut us down? We want to share with you out there that there is a God that we Christians have believed in and we trust in him that he's going to see us through no matter what he will. And he said he will 
be with us in all times. He will not leave us. So we know in this COVID-19 system, 19, uh, uh, 20, COVID-2019, uh, yeah. we know and we believe that he who have called us will see us through. So come join us if you are out there. Come join us. Believe in our Lord Jesus Christ and he will see you through too. Amen. 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 God bless you. Uh, many has been said about uh, this Rahab who wasn't a believer. The way we are behaving now, uh, we will be compared to the people of Israel when they were in Egypt. Hmm. The Lord did all kinds of miracles to bring them out of Egypt. But when they were on, on, uh, in the wilderness, at some point, they were murmuring and also saying all kinds of things against Moses mm. because of fear. Now we Christians are becoming like these people. We are saying things, murmuring, and also giving all kinds of false information and even forgetting our, about our God who is able to do everything. So if we don't believe in our God, the worldly people will do like, the, like Rahab did. So we should trust in the God that we serve. We shouldn't be double-minded people in this time of, I mean, in this serious time. We should be Christians who are holding on to our faith. We should stand firm and trust our God. Because like our mother said before, this epidemic has happened before. This is not the first time and the Lord was in control. So we know the same God who did this miracle in the time of the Israelites, I mean, when they were in Egypt, the Lord will also do miracle in our time. And wherever this disease came from, the Lord will make sure it goes back and we will be harmless. So mm -hmm. as Christians, we should hold on to our faith. We shouldn't let anything bring us down. Rumors cannot solve the situation. The only person who can solve this is the Lord of hosts. So we should depend on him and take fear out of us. Amen. 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 You know, I wanted to, even as our time is fast spent, as we are about to wrap up, I wanted us to look at this scripture. We are praying for God to, you know, heal us. We are praying for God to save us. But our life and our hope in God is not only about this life. He is the resurrection. He is the life. And I, I just want to go back to the book of Daniel chapter 3 as we state some fact that our God is able to save. But it's his prerogative. He can choose to save. He can choose to recall us. But... He said, if I live, in him we live and move and have our being. It's God's, we have his breath in us. We live in because he's destined us to live. And we know that in the life of King Jehoshaphat in Chronicles, they cry to God, God delivered them. There, there have been battles that they never had to fight because God fought it for them. So we know our God, he's able to use us to save the day. And he's able to save the day without our input in it. Either ways, he's still God. So you go to the book of Daniel chapter three and the Bible says, when you look at, I'm looking at it from that New King James version of the Bible, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is very classical. We talk about it very well. But what they said to the king is what I want to bring to the discussion. She's, they said in verse 16, oh Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, who we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace and he will deliver us from your hand O king so they are not doubting god's capability what he's able to do they understand his sovereignty but this is what they said which is very profound to me they said but if not let it be known to you O king that we do not serve your gods nor will we worship the gold image you have set up. Mommy, I want us to look at this. We are Christians, and we do know that there are some Christians out there who have been affected. We do know that there are some people who are there doing their job, very right. great nurses, very great doctors, that have been prime ministers, and you know other people in authority who are just going about doing their job, and this has affected them. Does that negate the power of our God? 
Say that the, the the last part. The fact that I'm a Christian and even COVID nineteen affects mm -hmm. me does that negate the power of my God? Does that mean God cannot protect me? You know, so we want to bring it to we as Christians. We are praying mm -hmm. for healing, but mm -hmm. people are being affected out there. And mm -hmm. these young boys say, "Look, our God, we we want you to know He's powerful. He's able to do this. But mm -hmm. even if He doesn't, He's still mm -hmm. God." Yeah. Mama Salome, what do you have to say to that? Yeah. Uh, what I see here is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wanted to make it clear to Nebuchadnezzar that not, nothing can separate them from the love they have for their God, not even death. So in this time, if God, the disease where we Christians are also being affected and God can decide to deliver us from it, if one of us is affected. And at the same time, to God through that can call us home. Mm. We, 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 we Christians, we have a belief that this place is not our home. Mm. We are in a transitory. So if God decide to take us home through this time, we are going to a better place. So they wanted it to make it clear to, for they knew, they know very well that God will by all means deliver them. But if he decides not to deliver them and he decides through that to call them, they will still stand firm or they will stand close to their God because they, 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 they knew what they have seen. They know what they have believed. So they believed in God that come what may, he will deliver them. But if he decides not to, and he decides through that to call them home, praise him. So in this time, if we Christians, if we, we are being affected by this disease, by this virus. And if God is not, he doesn't heal us. Maybe he needs us to come home through this. We will thank him. We will, we will not deny him because if maybe I've been affected with it because of that, I'll tell God that hence what I'm not going to serve him anymore because he has, he has allowed this disease to be affected me. No, but we, we will still stand firm and stand mm -hmm. in our faith and cling up to him knowing very well that he will deliver us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We have Elder Nana Boateng is with us. God bless you, sir. And Elder Kwame Ketia says, thank you, women of God, for elevating our faith on this coronavirus. Who is coronavirus before the blood of Jesus that speaks mm. better things than that of Abel? We are overcomers. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you too. And the Apostle Sawa Boateng is with us. And all those who are with us, Albar Penny Efe is with us. God richly bless you. And God bless all of you who are spending your time to be with us. Auntie Akusha Sawabuateng and all the other people, those we couldn't even acknowledge. God bless you. We're about to, you know, wrap up because that is fast spent, even as we begin to do our closing remarks. But you know what they said again is what we are saying. Our God is able. And I was thinking about something that happened in the book of, you know, Second Chronicles. I mm -hmm. mentioned it briefly, 20 verse 2. They got a bad report. But when you go to 18, it says, and Jehoshaphat king, he bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And if you continue to read it as they did it, God spoke and God won the victory for them. And this is what we are saying. If you're a Christian, this is the time. By all means, listen to the CDCs, listen to whatever the health personnel are saying. By all means, we as a church, we believe that we do the right thing. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Other versions are the righteous. A righteous person is the person who lives right. You do what is right, you do what is right. Beyond that, spiritually, we are praying to a God who can save. Auntie Hannah, Deaconess Georgina, if you give us your closer remarks, then for Mama Henrietta, and we give the final word to our Mama Salome Yaboa. Deaconess Hannah and Mama. All right. Um, my closing remark. Um, I want to speak on what um, our Mama Salome uh, ended with. Um, people out there, Christians that are going through some of these um, suffering and disease in times like this. I just want you to know that you have not been forsaken by God. God is still with you and he's not gonna forsake you. There is nothing that happens 
in this visible world that our God does not know about it spiritually. It is all naked before him. And he knows this time of the year, you will be part of this group of people that will be affected by this disease. And he's with you. He's not forsaken you yet. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego literally went through the fire. God had the power to deliver them before, but they went through it. And so hold on to your faith and know that you serve a God whose name is Jehovah Rapha. He is able to heal all diseases. And as we cry unto the Lord, we know and we have hope in the Lord that he is going to see us through. And he's with you. He has not forgotten you in this time. And he, I mean, the Bible said he has engraved our names in his palm. So your name is in the Lord. You are the heartbeat of God. And you are not alone. Hmm. God wow. bless you. God bless you for bringing us back to the fact that we are in God's hands. He's in our, we are in his palm. That's very powerful. God bless you so much, Deaconess Anna Amor. Deaconess Georgina Wama. Uh, as we all said, uh, we know that our God is a powerful God who is able to do everything. Hmm. But we shouldn't go out there and test God that because I have him, I will, not, I will not follow what is being said. I will do anything and I'm not going to get sick. We have to follow the rules that has been given and also trust in the Lord in our prayers. And we know that he will take care of us. Nothing will happen to us. Even when, like our mother said, if it happens, we will go home to be with him. And that is a better, better place. Amen. Amen. And I like what you said. We shouldn't test God. The devil told Jesus he should trump, he should fall off. God will cause his angels to hold him. And he said, I don't need to do that to prove anything to you. I don't have to test my God in that way. I know he's powerful. And so it's very great that you're bringing that dimension that just shall live by faith. We are just people. We live by example to give glory to God, but we are not ignorant people. We are very literate and God uses wisdom to teach us, knowledge to teach us. And so we'll do the precautions, yet we are not afraid. We have faith. Thank you very much. Do not test our God. God bless you, Auntie Georgina Obama. So Mommy Henrietta Christine. Yes, um, God bless you all for, once again, your wonderful contributions. One thing I wanted to close with, and it's just to encourage everyone who is listening, is that God is in control of everything that is going on. And we should not make God small within our eyes because of the things we hear or because of the things that we see. We should know and stand firm on the word of God that God is a great God, and there is no that is too great for him. Um, when we look at the word of God, when we look at scripture, we see so many things and so many ways God was able to take his people out of certain situations. And we are no different from those people. And the same God who was able to do it in the days of the old is also able to do it for us today. We're hearing things on news about, you know, we shouldn't, um, we should limit our social gatherings and etc. I want to encourage everyone, you know, that even as a church, we are very at Incentive to the instruction of those who are in charge of this nation, and we respect their um, what they are telling us to do. And so, if at any point in time we are called to, you know, be limiting our gatherings and things like that, we shouldn't use those times to just watch the different, um, you know, TV stations and continue to live in sin, uh, and fear and, and, and anxiety. But we should build ourselves more so in the Word of God and be able to build our spiritual lives and build our faith in knowing that God is able to do all things. Educate ourselves, educate our children. When it comes to washing our hands, when it comes to sanitizing, I teach my children every morning. So we're not naive to what's going on. We're not ignorant to what's going on, but we know that we serve a living God that is going to take us out and we will come to stand to testify to what he has done. God has done it before, our beloved, and he will do it again. So just be rest assured and stand on your faith and do not be moved by what you see. But know and know and know once more that God is living God and he will ever remain God. God bless you all. God bless you. You know, he, he, when you said that, my mind went to the book of Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. 
you know, do not be discouraged for the Lord your God is with you. But I like the portion where wherever you go, and I like that. That's what you're telling us. We stand on our faith. And at some point, the Bible says the prophet Elijah thought he was the only one. He said, look, I am the only one. And Baal has prophets like 450. Mm -hmm. When you go to the book of First Kings, and he wasn't the only one. God is ever with us. And so we stand on our faith. God bless you, all women. Mama Salome, your boy, the regional head of Atlanta Regional's wife, Evangelist Stephen Omani, your boy. Mommy, what will be your closing remarks to elevate the faith of people? Uh, okay. Um, I would like to, my closing remark, I would like to read something from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12 to 16. He said, the title says, the Lord confirms the covenant. Mm. He said, then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and I've chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or mm. command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Mm. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be upon, will, will, my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. Mm. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be, may be there forever and my eyes and my hearts will be there perpetually. We are, we've declared, I think, one week prayer. Mm -hmm. And we are praying. This Bible, I just, the version I read, the scripture is when Solomon dedicated the building and the glory of the Lord was so full in the house that he said the minister couldn't even minister. Mm -hmm. And at night, God came to Solomon and confirmed the covenant that he has for him. Now God is confirming his covenant he has for us. We are a glorious church possessing nations. And God is telling us today that we as glorious people, he says that if he sends pestilence and diseases to the land, and if we humble ourselves and pray, he will hear our prayers. We are not the church building sitting down. I mean, the church is not the building as the church, but we as the human being, you and I are the church. So we have been glorified already. So mm -hmm. through our prayers, everything that we speak, or we tell God about this disease and this virus going around, seeking and pleading with God to intervene, he will surely come. Because he confirmed it to, to Solomon that he will be in this house. Mm -hmm. He will dwell in that house. So whatever they ask him, he will fulfill it or he will do it for us. So my closing remark is that we have declared prayers we are praying that God should take, should be in control. And back with faith, we believe and we have the faith that God will see us through. It is just for a period of time. It will just pass by a period of time and we'll give God will give us a testimony and even a new song to sing all to the glory of the Lord. So may the name of the Lord be praised. Amen. 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 Mama Salome, Omani, God bless you. Even as you know, we... Uh, getting ready for moments for you to pray with us. Thank you all, women of God, so much for what you said. And even as Mama was reading my, you know, the spirit took me to the book of Job 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel mm -hmm. by words without knowledge? Mm -hmm. Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. And you go to third verse 6 and say, Have you entered? the spring of the sea? Or have you walked in search of the depths? Have the great gates of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the depth of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. There's no knowledge beyond the language of our God. There's no power beyond the power of our God. There's no goodness beyond the goodness of our God. And we are saying faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen by that the elders obtain a good testimony through our faith we'll equally obtain a good testimony in this season 
And what will be our testimony? That regardless, our God is able to say, regardless, our God is a good God. And those who put their faith in him, they are never put to shame. It's not only about this earth. So even if we go into the furnace, surely our God is able to deliver us. God bless you. Dignes Hannah Amwa of Colorado, Denver. God bless you, Dignes Georgina Buama of New York. God bless you, Mrs. Henrietta Christie, First Lady of Tennessee, and Mama yes. Salome Omani Abua. God bless you, bless you. Thank you all who have been listening to us. If you like, share, and join us again, God willing, next week, Monday, for another episode of today's so Mama Salome, if you could pray. And as a church, we are in prayer. Let's all continue to pray for the world. Our God is able to say, God bless you all. Our Heavenly Father, this evening we give you all the glory and adoration. We bless your holy name for who you are. And we even thank you for whatever is going on in this world at this time. Father, we have met this afternoon and discussed a lot. Basing our assumptions or basing our discussion on the word of God and for that matter faith. We are praying in the name of Jesus that whatever we are going through this time, you will encourage us and you will strengthen our faith. We will stand firm. We pray committing each and every individual into your mighty hand, the church of God into your mighty hands. We are standing in the gap for the world. We are standing in the gap for the nation of America. We are standing in the gap for Ghana. We are standing in the gap for the whole world as a whole. We pray in the name of Jesus that God, you will help us. You will strengthen us. You will use the blood as a mark on our forehead so that when the death of the virus is passing by, it will see us and go away in the name of Jesus. We pray that, Lord, your promises are yea. We pray that, Lord, the other time you, you rescued the Israelites and you told the Israelites that you will not inflict the disease that you inflicted on the Egyptians, even unto them. We are yeah. praying in the mighty name of Jesus, that Lord, we saturate our family, our church members, every individual into the blood of Jesus, that yeah. from today, you will help us and protect us against every evil. We pray that even at this time, if the devil is using this virus as a tool to, to, to discourage us, to, 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 to distract us from the word of God, or, or to, to, to deny our faith, we pray and we break that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you help us. The other time you confirm your covenant to Solomon, hmm. that when we, we, we humble ourselves and we pray, you will listen to our prayers. We are in a one-week prayer of God concerning this virus. We pray that before even the prayers end, you will reveal yourselves. You, 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 you will listen to our prayers and give us answers that not even a hair not even nothing whatsoever among us will be distracted by this virus. We know whom you have believed and we trust that you do it for us. Even in the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Elder Sam is not here at the studio. God richly bless you always for all that you do. I see Dickness, Janama, Patience, Jato, and Auntie Linda Techi have joined us. And all of you who are with us, God bless you. We want to acknowledge Apostle John Ofori and our national head, Apostle Michael Ajimana Mwako, for taking time off of your busy schedules to be with us. My husband, God bless you, dear, always for your support. And all of you, God bless you. Thank you all. Dignes Anna, Dignes Georgina, Safmarie Harrieta, and Mama Salome Omani Yabua. All of you, God bless you and have a blessed yes. evening. Bye. Bless Bye. You too. God bless you too. God bless you.